That is a, a could be a quite difficult to question because it's a three dimensional. Uh, let me cover that, and I also want to make sure that um, the question is coded correctly. <laughs> um, so three dimensional question, uh, three dimensional questions are hard. Uh, part of that is it takes a bit of an imagination. I remember there was an astrophysics class I took when I was, you know, undergraduate student, and it took me quite a bit of time to wrap my head around the, the spherical coordinate system that's used to describe the three-dimensional thing um, that they were somehow using for in, in astrophysics class. So um, so let me give a presentation. And um, uh, so just to give you some bit of an assurance, in this class, we will stay away from fully three-dimensional problems as much as we can. In fact, um, a lot of the things that you could describe as a three-dimensional, a lot of interesting things happen in two-dimensional plane. So as long as you choose the correct plane to define your coordinate system in, uh, you can describe them as being two-dimensional. So you have my assurance that to the extent we can, we will try avoid um, dealing with the things in fully three-dimensional space. Um, now, in the later in the semester, as we deal with the rigid body rotation, we will eventually have to deal with the full three dimensions. A rigid body rotation is one of those things that you can't really describe two dimensionally. So, with that, uh, let me first uh, draw my coordinate axis. I'm gonna take care to draw it as a right-handed coordinate axis. So, um, so uh, let me draw the perspective view first. This is my x-axis, this is my y-axis, um, this is my z-axis, and this is one of those things that you will probably see covered more thoroughly in Math 3C, multivariable calculus. Here, I'll just have to do my best, uh, do my best to, to cover what I can in uh, my overtime hours. Um, so, uh, so with the perspective view, it, uh, um, so perspective view is nice in helping you imagine how things look, but um, they lack a little bit of a precision. So let me draw one view that's uh, viewing from the positive x direction. So um, so so if you are so if you are imagine looking at it from this uh, side here, then uh, looking at this axis, you will see um, the x axis. Uh, looking like an arrow that's pointed at you. So, you know, imagine my fingers pointing towards you. That's the x-axis. And the um, y direction will be pointed to the right. Uh, that's, And this is what I mean by this being the right-handed axis, because I'm using my right hand to determine the what direction my z-axis should be. Uh, so, and I'll cover the right-hand rule <laughs> later in the semester more. So, x cross y gives me t. So um, so this is the uh, view from uh, view from uh, plus x direction towards origin. So the vector that I'm given, um, it has um, so, you, and, and in case you are not familiar with this convention, the i hat, j hat, uh, k hat, these are alternate uh, unit vectors that are basically the same, well, they are the same as x hat, y hat, and z hat. I myself prefer x hat, y hat, z hat, and I won't use these unless, you know, textbook does. <laughs> I need to refer to them. But i hat, j hat, k hat, they mean the same thing as x hat, y hat, z hat. So, um, so it has a positive x component and then negative y component. And then uh, I guess it's plus one k hat. So again, positive uh, z component. So uh, from this view, my vector will go this way in the negative y direction and uh, in the plus uh, z direction. And from this view, the x component kind of gets collapsed. That's one of the reasons we are drawing the perspective view so that I can indicate what the x component would look like. But uh, from this view, this is my vector d. 
Now, in the perspective view, so I have to account for the fact that this um, vector is going in the positive x direction. So let's see here. Um, so plus, and then this is the negative. So uh, let me just uh, draw the projection onto the xy plane first. So the projection onto the xy plane would look something like here. This would be the projection onto the xy plane. Now, for the actual the vector, I have to imagine going up by one unit in the z direction. So this is going to be my vector d. And despite the appearances, it is above the xy plane. It's not below. It's the whole perspective thing. So, uh, <laughs> um, so having uh, drawn this, I think it is still quite complicated for people who haven't um, dealt with these three-dimensional situations. So I'll give you the formula that will help you um, figure it out. Um, so this formula relates to something called inner product, the, the dot product that um, that uh, the textbook section actually covers that we are kind of skipping over for this way. We'll cover that product later when we use it more. And um, you can think of it this way. So when you have um, two vectors, I'm just going to draw them in the um, two-dimensional plane, vectors A and B. And uh, there's a scalar you can get with these two vectors. Uh, let's say there are some relative angle theta, the dot product, a dot b is equal to the magnitudes of the vectors a times b times the cosine of the angle between them um, so in a math class you might see this being derived as a consequence of the component definition of the dot product in a physics class i like to present as this as the physics definition of the product and you can actually derive the component definition from this relationship. Now, the reason I'm pointing this out is to say this can be a way to um, generalize and quickly figure out the angle between any two vectors. This relationship is valid in two dimensions. It's valid in three dimensions. And in fact, if you have a higher dimensional vector space, this is how you define angle between any two vectors in higher dimensional uh, vector space. Um, so here, for the ca calculation of the dot product, I'm actually going to use the, the math definition of dot product, which says that the dot product between two vectors is the product of the components, ax times bx plus ay times by plus ag times bg. And so this is the uh, what I like to call math definition of the product. And the difference between these two, uh, the biggest is that the, for the physics definition, you don't need any coordinate system. You see how I didn't define a coordinate system. For the math definition, you need the coordinate system to know what x, y, and z components are. Uh, in our case, it doesn't matter. We are given the component. We already have x, y, z. So we are, that's our starting place. So what I'm going to calculate is I'm going to calculate uh, d, that product with uh, x hat. That will give me this thing here. So the magnitude d times magnitude of x hat, that's just one, times cosine of the angle between d as the vector and x hat. So to get this angle, all I have to do is take this result and take the arc, wait, not take the, take the result, divided by D, and then put it through arc cosine. When I do that, I'll end up with theta x. So uh, since I'll be using this number D quite a bit, let me calculate it first. So um, D is given by Pythagorean theorem still. Um, the Pythagorean theorem in the multiple dimensions looks like, um, oh, oh, I guess I can actually describe D in terms of the dot product. So D in terms of dot product is the square root of D as a vector dotted to itself.
and you can do this dot product using the component definition, which will be uh, dx squared plus dy squared plus dg squared. I hope uh, this kind of looks um, familiar with the two-dimensional version. It just looks a little bit generalized into three dimension, and that's sort of what it is. So let me calculate that. I'm going to put that into memory uh, after calculating it. So 3 squared plus the minus signs will cancel out. So I'll just do 8.5 squared plus oh, 1 squared. That's just going to be 1, but let me type it in for consistency. So sum of all those squares, and then I have to take the square root. And let me put that into memory, and I'll be recalling that from memory for each of the calculations. So these dot products between dn x hat, and as I'll have to do dn y hat and dn z hat, they are all very simple because when you look at this component definition of the product, uh, it basically, uh, when you are doing the dot product with the unit vectors, it basically picks out the component. Because um, in this dot product, all the ones involving the y component will be, y component and z component will be zero. So I'll just get the x component. With this calculation, only the y component will be non-zero and the rest will be zero. So the dot product is simply picks out these components that you already know. So for the for the, the uh, d dot x, that's going to be 3. So let me start from there, 3. Um, so, so that's the number that's here. I'm going to divide it by d. So divide it by the number I stored into memory. Uh, let me put equal. That's the ratio. And once I put it through the arc cosine, that will give me theta x. So arc cosine. So 70.68 degrees. Oh, why am I writing those like uh, money numbers? <laughs> let me do y component. And here, let me put in the signs. The signs are not going to end up mattering, but let me put it in anyway to be thoroughly correct. So minus 8.5. Divide by, oh, yeah, I think it's all going to work out. Memory, recall, the number I put into memory for the magnitude. Okay, I get some negative ratio. Good. Uh, that looks wrong. Wait, is that? No, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's smaller than one. Good. Okay, let me take the inverse uh, cosine. And I'll get a positive answer. And, Oh, wait, the minus sign does matter. Okay, okay, yeah, it's okay. So minus sign doesn't matter. <laughs> Sorry, I got the... Wait, um... Yeah, I guess it does matter. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Does matter, good. So make sure you put in the minus sign. Um, and you get one 159.6 degrees as the angle from the y-axis. Okay, uh, let me finish with the G. So G component is going to be 1 divided by, again, the same magnitude as before. That's the ratio. And once uh, I have that ratio, put it through the arc cosine to get the angle. Trigonometry, arc, cosine. 83.67 degrees. 83.67 degrees. And I hope as you look at these angles, if you drew your diagram here reasonably to scale, that these angles make sense. Like from x to that vector that, yeah, you can imagine that being 70.68. Uh, from y to that, you can imagine them being 159.6. And from z to that, you can imagine that being 83.67. So I hope it kind of makes intuitive sense. And beyond that, there isn't any rule that you can impose on it. It's different from two dimensions where you could say, oh, those angles must add up to 90 degrees or something. No, um, but in three dimensions, there isn't an easy rule like that. <laughs> there, there's much more, many different ways this angle can go. So let me put that in, make sure that I got it right. Or uh, more precisely, I hope the question got it right. So I'm pretty sure I'm right. <laughs> 15.9.6, 83.67. 
Let's see. Okay, good. So yeah, this is a three-dimensional thing. Um, I can I realize that this can throw people for a loop, which is why I made sure I did it. <laughs> and uh, and you won't have to deal with so many three-dimensional problems in this class. We'll try to avoid dealing with the three dimensions as much as we can.